Here we go. Velocity, acceleration, and displacement. We spent a lot of time in physics 11 dealing with that. In physics 12, we're going to assume for the most part that you know it. I'm going to spend one day on it, but we're going to be using it over and over and over all year long. So the first thing, acceleration. We defined this last year as a change in velocity over a time interval. And those of you that had me last year, when I ask you what's change in anything, you'll say to me, oh, I weep. What is change in anything? Nicole, my angel, for a candy, absolutely, I was shopping on the weekend. That's so profound and important, I'd like to say it even louder. What's change in anything? Final minus initial. You see, in math notation, we get this. Acceleration equals change in velocity over time. Instance change in anything is final minus initial. Final minus initial. Do you remember that or did you just read it right there? Mm. We can also write it as this. A equals VF minus VI over T. For what it's worth, Emily, technically it should be change in velocity over change in time. There should be a delta there, too. Remember that from last year? But time is always a change in, and so we get a bit sloppy, and we almost always, in physics, drop the delta in front of the T because it's just implied. This wasn't how you saw it introduced to you last year. We rewrote it as this. We got the V final by itself. Except we're going to be fussy this year. Vector, vector, vector. Direction's going to matter this year. VF equals VI plus AT on your formula sheet. But I'll be honest, if you're a good student, you'll probably just end up memorizing this one because you use it so often. This assumes uniform or unchanging acceleration. If you have changing acceleration, you need calculus. The math gets ugly. Where is there changing acceleration? Uh, Brett Space Shuttle launches. As the fuel burns, what happens to the overall mass of the spacecraft as the fuel burns? Gets lighter, even though the engines are still putting out the same amount of thrust, they're having to move less mass. The space, spacecraft actually accelerate faster and faster and faster, and it's beautiful, yucky math. Uh, if we have uniform acceleration, we also can find average speed, which I'll sometimes write as the average. But if you want the fancy math term, and this is what it is on your formula sheet, V, a horizontal bar, means average. How do you find the average? How do you find the average? Let's suppose Brianna has 10 bucks and Emily has 15 bucks. What are they average between them? How'd you get 1250? Emily, turns out V average is add V final and V initial and divide by 2. Uh, that also implies something. It implies, Kara, that if here is V initial and here is V final, and you graph them, the average will occur exactly halfway between them if your acceleration is uniform. So if you accelerate at a constant speed, and you start out at 10 meters per second, and you hit final 50 meters per second, 10 plus 50 is 60 divided by 2, you hit 30 meters per second exactly halfway through your route. Then we have distance. In physics, in physics 10, in science 10, you define distance as average speed times time. D equals Vt. This was before we did acceleration. This was science 10. However, I just told you that V average is this. So I plugged it right into there. Is that okay so far? Oh, one more thing, though. V final is V initial plus AT. 
So you know what I can replace this V final with right here? V initial plus AT. We can write it like this. D equals V initial plus AT plus V initial all over 2 times T. Oh, um, here's what I see, Zay. 1V initial plus 1V initial. I think those are like terms. They're not the cleanest like terms, but those are like terms. Zay, do you know what 1V initial plus 1V initial is? I can rewrite this as 2V initials plus AT all over 2 times T. So far so good, Mitchell? So far so good? I'm going to multiply the T onto everything. Fancy word distribution. Front door bomber if you had Mr. Rocca for math. Never understood that one, but whatever. It works. D equals, I'll get 2 VIT plus AT squared and this is over 2, and this is over 2. The whole thing's over 2, but instead, Kara, I just broke it up. I got a very good reason for doing this. Kara, look at this first fraction. What's 2 divided by 2? Kayla. I was going Kara. I'm sorry. Kara there. Kayla. Kayla, what's this first fraction, 2 divided by 2? What happens to the 2s? Woohoo! And over here, I have divided by 2, but instead of dividing by 2, I'm going to write that as multiplying by a half because this is where it comes from. VIT plus 1 half AT squared. D equals VIT plus 1 half AT squared. Kayla, that's where it came from. You don't need to know that. I won't ask you to you know, redo that on a test, but usually I'll try and show you where stuff comes from because I think that helps you both remember and understand the physics. So, remember that one from last year, Trevor? D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. Almost all of you memorized it because you use it so often. So, let's put that in box number three here on the next page. D equals VIT plus one half AT squared. Oh, except now, Sean, I need to be vector fussy. That's a vector, that's a vector, and that's a vector. Wait now. What did? How did you think I was gonna read that? Like, uh, come on! Can't make the font much bigger. Old guy. Ah! The last of the four equations we're going to use this unit is awkward to derive right now. It actually pops out of work and energy in about two lines really, really easily comes from the fact that kinetic energy is a half mv squared. So I'm not going to derive it right now. I'm just going to give it to you, and it's this. Vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad. And those are all vectors, too. Although here, the vectors end up not being quite as important. Because if you're squaring a negative, often the negative vanishes anyhow. But, okay. Let's do some examples. Now, in Physics 11 and in Physics 12, I have two acronyms that I always use. DALP and DFIC. DALP. Who had me last year? What does DALP stand for? Do you remember? Draw. Uh little picture. When in doubt, dalt. You have a word problem extra to do? Draw a little picture. And then DFIC was another acronym. It was my approach and it stood for, hey, list your data. Write down what you know. Find a formula that has everything and what you're looking for in it. 
but nothing else. Insert the numbers, and then crunch the answer. Well, I always say crunch the answer. Calculate, I think, was what my teacher used to say. If I'm not sure what to do, if I come to a new question, I dolph and I defect. Usually it gets me through most of it. So we're brushing off cobwebs from Physics 11. Example 1, a dragster has an acceleration of 18 meters per second squared. Um, who remembers last year, what was 1G of acceleration? How big? 9.8. This is not quite 2Gs. I actually looked this up. Dragsters have an acceleration of about this much. I stole these from the internet, so I assume it's accurate. It begins from rest. I would almost always underline the word from rest because that tells me something very important. What does that tell me? VI is zero. How fast will the dragster be going after 2.1 seconds? So here's my question. What are they asking me to find in this question? First of all, I want to be careful. Um, speed, we're doing vectors. And if you ever say velocity, I'm always going to say to you, which one? But this person said it correctly the first time. I heard it back there. Fin we're being asked to find v final. So I write down that. The reason I always write down what we're trying to find is I've learned over the years, my question is no longer blank. Brett, I'm more relaxed. I'll do better. I've learned that with students over the years. Writing anything down always helps. Now I'm going to defic. I'm going to list my data. So the first number, as I read through here, I see the number 18. Hopefully, you clued in last year the value of memorizing what units go with what. Because I don't actually look at the 18. I look at the meters per second squared. And right away, what do I know that is, Connor, my friend? 18 is what? I have. You can write the units when you're deficking or not. I usually don't because I'm in a rush and on a test I probably would. It begins from rest, Connor. What did this tell me? I'll write that down. And then I read through part A and what's this 2.1, Connor? Okay. So I'm looking for an equation that has V final, A, V initial, and T in it. Which one? Now, in your homework, when you get good at this, Trevor, I don't have a big issue if you jump straight to plugging in numbers. On a test or on a quiz, I will give you marks for writing out the correct formula, even if everything else is garbage. So I'm going to build that habit into you in your notes and on a test and on a quiz. I'm going to always write out the formula. So I heard somebody mutter under their breath, I'm pretty sure it's V final equals V initial plus AT, which is going to be 0 plus 18 times 2.1. 18 times 2 is 36. 18 times 0.1 is 1.8. 36 and 1.8. 37.8. Someone want to check me? Yes? I can do math in my head. I grew up without a count. Okay. Units. Meters per second. All right. B. How far will it have traveled after 2.1 seconds? Oh, by the way, if you're looking for a rough guide as to how big your answer is, if you double meters per second, it's roughly miles an hour. And I'm assuming you've traveled to the States enough to know a little bit about miles per hour. 60 miles an hour is 100 kilometers per hour. So doubling this, it's about 80 miles an hour. About 130, 140 clicks, give or take. Does that seem reasonable? Sure. If I'd gotten 378 meters per second and I doubled that to uh, 600 miles an hour, I'd be saying, I don't think you go from 0 to 600 in 2.1 seconds. So you can get a rough feel. Brett, what's this asking me to find in Part B? Mr. Redman. Huh? Got to be really fussy. It's not. Ah, it is technically the displacement. Now, having said that, my big... Sin, my big mistake, I always mix up the words distance and displacement, so I won't jump on you for doing that. But I'll put the vector here and go, okay. So now 
I have all my defect data listed right above me. I'm not going to relist it. I'm looking for an equation that has D and then some or all of these in it. Don't all come up with the answer at once or anything. Sorry? No, no. I want the equation. Let's try this again. Katie's right at the answer. Uh, I'm looking for an equation that has D and some of these other stuff in it. I have to assume you guys have forgotten everything, Katie. I apologize if you haven't, but I have, I've learned over the years. Go ahead. You could use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. I would not. You know why? Because in using VF, I'm using my previous answer to find the new answer. I'll only use a calculated answer to find a second answer if I have to. Because if I got A wrong, I'm getting B wrong. I think there is also an equation that has D in it that doesn't use anything calculated. And I think it has the D by itself already. Which one? Darn right. We can just straight plug and chug. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. I would not take marks off if you use VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. I would say be a better test writer than that. What did we say VI was? Woohoo, gone. So this is going to be 0.5 times 18 times 2.1 squared. Katie, what's the answer? 39.7, is that two or three sig figs? Then I'm good with that. Units? Yep. Is that right, by the way? Yes? Turn the page. How, see, how long will it take the dragster to reach a velocity of 126 meters per second? Okay. What's this bad boy asking me to find? Connor wants you done yawning. Long isn't a variable on my formula sheet. I agree with that. So I'll do that. What else have they told? Oh, this time they've given me this. Connor, what's this? Which one? I agree. That's not enough to solve anything. I have to use some other data from the previous page. I think we're still assuming that the initial is zero. I think we're still assuming that the acceleration is 18. Is there an equation that has D, V, F, V, I, and A in it? Connor, say yes. Okay. Which one? And do me a favor, once you find it, in your head, rearrange it to get the T by itself if you can. If you can't, that's fine, but we're going to push you this year. Yeah, I don't have them. I don't. They're not numbered. It's just the first one we did. The actual VF equals VF plus AT. Is that one? Rewrite it. Get the T by itself. T equals VF minus VI over A. I am totally good if you go straight to this line. In fact, I strongly encourage you to go straight to that line. And VF is 126 minus 0 divided by 18. 126 divided by 18. Well, I can divide by top by 2. That's going to be 63. Does it work out evenly? Is it 7.0 even? Yeah. This would be wrong, by the way. How many sig figs? That's one. We said from now on this year, two or three. So I'm going to go 7.0 uh, T time. Seconds. How far will the dragster have traveled once it hits 153 meters per second? Okay. I think they're asking me to find a displacement. I think they've given me, uh, oh, 153, that's V final, 153. I think V initial is still zero. 
acceleration is 18. Brett, this time, do I know the time? This time, I have to use an equation that has d, v, f, a, and i in it. This is where I would use the vf squared equals vi squared plus 2ad equation. Except, can you do me a favor, Brett? Can you get the d by itself in your head and just rattle it off to me? d equals something squared, blah, blah, blah. Can you do it? I know I'm asking you to do some math in your head first week, second week of school. I think, isn't it vf squared minus vi squared? You'd minus the vi squared over, and then you would divide by... I totally agree. vf 153 squared minus... VI zero squared all over two times eighteen. Hmm. More than one number on the top and on the bottom. Better go with brackets. One hundred and fifty three squared. Minus zero squared. I guess I didn't need to type that. Divided by two times eighteen. You get six hundred and fifty. Is that two or three sig figs? Then I'm good with it. Meters, units. This particular dragster has a top speed of one hundred and sixty-two meters per second. And then the dragster driver opens his parachute, deploys the parachute. It takes 12 seconds for the dragster to come to a stop. What's its average acceleration? The reason I wrote, Brianna, average acceleration, I don't think it's constant. I think initially, the faster you're going, the more the parachute pulls. But when you're nearly slowed down, the parachute, often I've watched on TV, is limp and not hardly pulling at all. But let's assume it's constant. So average acceleration, otherwise yucky man. What's this question asking me to find? Actually, two things. It's got kind of a part A and a part B. So I'm going to go a little one for part one. Andrew, what's the first part asking me to find? A equals question mark. All right, let's work our way back through here. What's this 162? Sorry? I disagree. I don't think it's VF. I think it's V initial. You know how I know? I know what V final is. You know what V final is in this question, even though they haven't told me? Ah, zero. VI is going to be 162. By the way, Adam, are we speeding up or slowing down? I did it. Ah, Andrew, are we speeding up or slowing down, Andrew? So should our acceleration be positive or negative if we do this right? I'm expecting a negative answer here. If not, I'll be a little concerned. Oh, I see another number. 12. What's that? I agree. Andrew, do we have an equation that has acceleration, VF, VI, and T in it? Yeah. Can you rewrite that equation, getting the A by itself, and go A equals... Yep. Yep. I totally agree. On the provincial, and therefore on my tests you would get a mark just for writing down the correct equation. So it's a great habit to get into, and it's organized. It takes one second. Andrew, what did you say VF was? I agree, minus. I agree, divided by 12. And Oh, good, that's going to give me a negative answer. I have no idea what. Bracket, 0 minus 162, close bracket, divided by 12. Negative 13.5 meters per second squared. Yeah, yeah. Good, good. Turn page.
talk about your tests. Yo, I forgot the second half. Ah, wait a minute. There's a part two. How long does it have to travel? Thank you. Thank you, Andrew, for pointing out my negligence. How long does it have to travel? I think now it's saying, uh, now, this is where English is bad, because how long can refer to a time, or it can refer to a displacement. Do you think they want me to find the time here? Say no. You know why? Because they told me the time here. It takes 12 seconds. I don't think that's the answer. I don't think they want me to just write 12 seconds and we're done. If I gave this to you on a test, I would rephrase this. I would say, how far does it have to travel before it comes to a stop? And I may retype this. I keep forgetting to, and I do this every year. Note to self. So I think they want me to find a displacement. Do I have all my data listed here, Nicole? Say yes. Then I'm not going to read defect. I got it all there. All right. What equation? Sorry? What equation can I use here? Better have a D in it. So I don't think I'm using VF equals VI plus AT because that doesn't have a D in it. I don't think I'm using V average equals VI plus VF over 2. I think I would use D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. It's got the D by itself. Now the only issue here, Brett, is that means I'm going to use the A that I just calculated. But I'm pretty sure I'm right, and I maybe go back on a test and just double check. I really want to make sure. Now, having said that, on a test, this is how I mark Brett. Supposing you couldn't find the acceleration. Supposing you couldn't do the first part. But you knew how to do the second part. If you wrote a note to me, I can't find part A, and you made up a reasonable acceleration, you wrote, assume A equals 19 meters per second squared, and you solved it completely, I would work out your answer to see if you did it right, and I would give you full marks for part two. I will always do that. Okay? The message is never, never, ever leave a question blank. Always write something. So, Brandon, we're going to go like this. D equals VIT plus a half AT squared. VI is 162 times 12T plus... A half A, negative 13.5, 12 squared. Am I expecting a positive answer or a negative answer here? Which way are we traveling? Forward. I think it's going to get a positive answer. We're not traveling backwards yet. Jake, what'd you get? Oh, I thought you, were, I thought you looked up because you were done. Matt, what'd you get? Sorry? I don't think it's seconds because I don't think I'm finding T. What am I finding? So, what would the units be? Is it 972? People are nodding. D equals 972 meters. No? Ah! 162 times 12 plus 0.5 times negative 13.5 times 12 squared. There is some dissension. I'm getting 972. So if you got something, do you get a bigger answer or a smaller answer? Smaller? You put a negative there, but no negative anywhere else, right? Or you forgot the squared, the two most common mistakes. In fact, at least once this year, after a test, you're going to hear me say, square! because about 10 people wrote all the right stuff, forgot to do the squared, and all got the same wrong answer. And I'll notice the pattern when I'm marking it. How come everyone keeps getting 17.1? That's not... Oh, don't tell me they forgot to hit the squared button on their calculators. So don't do that. Or Trevor, I'll snap. I'll lose it. Can I turn the page now? Woohoo! Let's turn the page. 
You ready for your first shock? I have based my tests in Physics 12 on the used to be provincial that no longer exists. And on the used to be provincial, there was always, listen up, an essay question. Emily's face just, what? Sort of. The last question of every provincial was a using principles of physics right to explain question. I will be doing a bunch of those during the year with you. Although I said essay, you're going to find I answer them with almost no English. In fact, often I'll do a good free body diagram or a couple of lines of work. Or my last line of defense is I'll make up reasonable numbers and just show that it works. But on every one of your tests, pretty much, there is going to be a using principles of physics right to explain kind of a question. Here is your first example of such a question. Example three. An object starts at rest, and it accelerates east at a constant rate. Accelerates in which direction, Kara? I have done this stupidly wrong so often. As soon as they mention a compass direction, I always, in the margin, draw a compass rose. Because the number of times I've done stuff wrong drives me crazy. It takes one second, so there's my compass rose. When it has traveled 10 meters, it is moving at speed V. Check. How fast will it be moving when it has traveled 20 meters? Select the best answer. V? More than 2V? Exactly 2V. Ah, less than 2V, but more than V. Here's how we're going to do this. You're going to vote. Here's how you're going to vote. If you're positive of the answer, your hand goes up as high as you can. In fact, if you're absolutely positive, you can even stand on your chair. If you're fairly sure, not sure, only voting because if I don't vote, Mr. Duick will notice that I never move my hand and he'll make fun of me. And I will. Okay? Positive all the way to, I oh, really haven't got a clue. So read the question, and you're going to pick A, B, C, or D. You ready? Who says A is the correct answer? No one. Who says B is the correct answer? Matt. Zay. Who jumps on the bandwagon with Matt. Who says C is the correct answer? Many. Who says D is the correct answer? Mitch, did you vote? So... Everybody look at Mitch. Mitch, do you think A is the correct answer? You haven't voted yet. Are you sure or only partly? Yes, positive, maybe, not so sure. Okay. I'll catch if you don't vote usually. All right. So now here's the, here's the rule. You can either attack someone else's answer and convince me that they're wrong, or you can defend your own answer and convince me that you're right. Attack or defend. What do you got? Someone convince me that they're right or that someone else is wrong. Zay, what did you pick? You picked D now? Oh, you left Matt behind? You think D is correct? Convince me. So you wrote this down. You said, well, VF squared equals VI squared plus 2AD. I said, okay. Okay, so what Zay is saying, I started to make up reasonable numbers, which is a valid approach. He said, I'm going to pretend speed V, which is V initial, was, what would you say? Oh, Okay, so you started out here and you said if we're VI is zero, did you get the A by itself or what did you do now? I don't know. Well, 
Let's make up some reasonable numbers. Let's say that at 10 meters, the speed it was traveling at 10 meters was, pick a nice number, Emily, five. So at 10 meters, five meters per second. What was its acceleration? I don't care. I could make the acceleration whatever I wanted to by changing the time. So I'm going to pretend that it was accelerating at a lovely 2 meters per second squared. And I'm just going to now crunch some numbers and see what happens, okay? So how fast was it going after 10 meters? 5. How fast would it be going after 20 meters? Well, it would be going VI squared plus two times what did I say the acceleration was just trying to make up a number to see what would happen two and here's the key how far has it traveled starting at 10 ending at 20 how far has it traveled it's traveled 10 meters from VI to VF is that okay now type in the right hand side on your calculator and then don't forget to square root. If C is right, you should get exactly 10. What do you get? Sorry? You're jumping on Zay's bandwagon? What did Zay, what did you go with? D? Let's see. 5 squared plus 2 times 2 times 10 equals square root. Are we faster at 20 meters? Yes. Are we twice as fast? No. It says explain your answer using appropriate principles of physics. I wrote this here. I wrote this here. So I would write assume v at 10 is 5. A is 5 meters per second squared. V20 equals, what did we say using those numbers? 8.06 meters per second. Uh, Nicole, if we'd use different numbers, we'd get a different answer, but I don't think we get exactly twice as big. What do three dots in a triangle like that mean? It's an abbreviation for therefore. Feel free to use it. It's nerdy. D. By the way, hopefully you went like this in your mind. It's speeding up. It can't be the same speed. It says accelerating. Okay. That's actually a fairly tough one. Sometimes, Kara, I'll plug in reasonable numbers like we just said, and that's a great and a approach, and a lot of you won't get beyond that. I will try and do some of these algebraically because I'm a nerd as well. Example four. Two cars are at rest facing each other 300 meters apart, but we don't want anybody to die, so we're going to assume they're in separate lanes. Car 1 accelerates at 6 meters per second squared up to a maximum speed of 30 meters per second. Car 2 accelerates at 5 meters per second squared up to a maximum speed of 35 meters per second. How long does it take the cars to meet? Assume they are in different lanes so there is no crash. Hmm. This is actually a fairly tough question. You did this last year calling it relative velocity, but the only way you did it last year was we had both had the cars already at their top speed. The fact that they're accelerating at different rates makes this a fairly yucky question because you'd have to figure out how long it takes this car to accelerate, how much time passes, how much time passes for this car to accelerate, 
how far this car has traveled, how far this car has traveled. I've talked a long time and I can tell you guys are kind of zoning out, so I'm actually going to say don't worry about this one. This was kind of like an advanced bonus one. The nerd within me likes it, but that's okay. What's your homework? On a separate piece of paper, preferably, you can do numero un, two, three, four, five is good. Eight, because I've been on a slide before. Okay. And you will notice the answers are in brackets. I will do that almost all the time, or they'll be attached at the end, but I will almost never give you homework without the answers. So let you check your answers. I have one more thing for you. 